What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So in today's video we are dropping gems, we are dropping straight up knowledge when it comes to dividends and dividend growth investing. So you guys can see this is my dividend growth portfolio over here. It's pretty small but you guys remember I started off this portfolio with less than $500. So the whole purpose of this channel is to show you that anything is possible. We're on that Kevin Garnett level stuff. So with that being said we just hit a huge milestone of $100 every single year in passive income through this dividend growth portfolio. So if you guys want to learn more about that or if you guys want to see how you guys can do this as well Even with a small portfolio then stay tuned and keep watching and cue the intro So to start, I'm using M1 Finance as a platform that I have my dividend growth portfolio on where we started July 1st of last year, 2020 at roughly less than $500. And somehow, some way we accumulated almost $5,400 through consistent investing every single week through dollar cost averaging, also through reinvesting dividends and capital appreciation. You guys can see that I have a gain of almost $880 with a return of 40%. And that also includes market gain and dividends so we came quite a long way but we're still not even close to our end goal of being able to retire at an early age through dividends so again guys we hit a huge milestone in the past week where we are earning $100 every single year that's nowhere near enough to be able to retire but it is a step in the right path so with that being said let's take a look at my dividend tracker to kind of show you guys all the dividends that I'm earning so this is the website that I use to track my dividends. It's under trackerdividends.com and you can sign up for free. I don't have any affiliation or anything like that, but I definitely do have a video where you can learn more about this website. So I'll leave a link at the top right if you guys want to set it up for yourself and track your own dividends. It's pretty cool. It has a lot of insights. Definitely love this website. So back to the video. So this is the part where I'm going to be dropping tons of gems. You guys can see that my portfolio is sitting at $5,350 and it seems like it's not a lot, but it's also netting me about $100 in annual income. But to be fair, I could be making way more money if my dividend yield wasn't as low as 1.86%. And we'll get into that later on in the video. But to kind of put into perspective, if my account value was $2,500 and my stocks averaged about 4% dividend yield, I would be making $100 at $2,500. And again, if it was $2,000 and my average yield was 5%, I would be making that same $100 with way less money, $2,000 compared to $5,350. So you guys are probably sitting there wondering why I don't just invest into high yielding companies. And the reason for that is, and this is where I'm really going to be dropping knowledge, is typically companies that have a low dividend yield typically tend to grow at a lot larger of a pace than the companies with already high of a dividend yield. So that's just typically how it works with a lot of these companies. And I'll give you guys an example. So Apple over here is giving me a 0.59% dividend yield, which is very low relative to my entire portfolio. But at the same time, it gave me a profit loss of $58.59 with just under two shares. That's pretty remarkable. And I've only had this portfolio just a span over a year. So if we also do the quite opposite and look at the dividend yield with the most, we got AT&T over here with 7.43%. And we don't even have a profit on this company. In fact, we're actually down $3.95. So that's a huge difference when it comes to these two companies. So on one side, we got Apple with a very low dividend yield, but they're giving me a huge profit. And then on the other side, we got AT&T, which has a huge dividend yield that blows other companies out of the water, but they are losing me money. So that's just one example. And you can see this is kind of a recurring theme when it comes to dividend companies. So from that point on, it really depends on where you are in life. So if you're closer to retirement or you are retired, you probably don't want companies like Apple or Microsoft that have a low dividend yield and a high rate of profit. But on the other side, you would want companies like AT&T, Verizon, Realty Income, Kimberly Clark, where these yields are a lot higher and they don't typically grow. But if you are like me and you have a tons of time to actually be able to compound your growth over time, then you probably want companies like Apple, Microsoft, and so on. And the reason for that is because they actually not only grow a lot faster, but they actually grow the amount of dividends they give you a lot larger than some of the other companies. So again, just to put that into perspective, Apple will grow their dividend by maybe 7 8% per year, while AT&T will only grow it 1%, 2 3% at most every single year. And I'll give you guys an example and show you guys that in just a second. 
All right, so let's take a look at the difference between Apple stock and the AT&T stock. So we've got Apple's statistics over here. You can see all the dividend summary stats over here. So we've got a dividend yield at a very low 0.6%. But at the same time, they're giving a five-year growth rate of 9.3%. And that's exactly what you're looking for. If you have a longer time span like me, I'm looking to retire in my 40s and 50s. So this is perfect. Getting a 9.3% raise on my dividends every single year is huge. And of course, we don't really know if this is going to be sustainable forever. But Apple has a very low payout ratio, which just means that they only pay about 15% of their profits to dividends and their dividend shareholders. So that's not that much at all. And this just means that they have tons of room to grow. So this is what you're looking for if you have a longer time span like me. But on the other side of the spectrum, if you're an AT&T shareholder and you're looking to retire, this is probably perfect because they pay a high dividend yield, but they their five-year growth rate is so low at 1.72 percent in fact this just barely keeps up with inflation if not it doesn't really keep up with it at all so this is just something to look at when comparing these two different types of stocks so first of all if you have a long time to spend you probably want companies that have a higher five-year growth rate or if you're close to retirement then this would be a perfect example of a stock that you would want to keep inside of your portfolio. And believe it or not, there are a lot more benefits with having a lower dividend yield than just having a higher dividend growth rate. For example, it has to do with taxes. Dividends are actually taxed as income, and I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to learn a little bit more about that. But I'd rather not pay taxes right now. I'd rather pay it later on when I'm actually ready to retire. So if I'm reinvesting my dividends, then it's going to be kind of complicated when it comes to taxes. So it's probably better off if I do it later on, right? So that's the whole point of having a dividend yield lower right now because I'm getting a higher dividend growth rate and I'm also paying less on taxes right now. But hopefully it will help build a gap between my dividend yield and my yield on cost. So yield on cost is basically what you're getting for what you paid back then. So right now my total dividend yield is 1.86% but it's as if I'm getting 2.16%. So I have videos on that from the past so I'll definitely leave a link in the description or on the top right over here so you guys can check that out. But essentially let's take a look at what I mean. So Apple, I have a huge profit over here. I don't want to call it huge, but relative to my portfolio, it's pretty big. So you can see my dividend yield is 0.59%, but my yield on cost is 0.76%. So I'm actually earning more on Apple than I am if I were to buy it today. So that's one of the best things about buying companies that have a lot of upside potential when it comes to capital appreciation. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when building a dividend growth portfolio, especially if you have a longer time span like I do. So anyways, I thought it would be fun if I go through all the stocks that I have and kind of show you how much annual income they give me. And anyways, I thought that would be fun. So let's just go ahead and get into that. So let's start off with the companies that pay me out the least. So first off, we got Disney and that's because they stopped paying out a dividend. I'm sure they're going to reinstate it this year or next, especially with their popping off streaming service. So we'll have to see. I definitely think it's a great company. Next off, we have ESPO, which is just an ETF for the video game sector. And to be honest, I got them as a capital appreciation play hoping that they would go up in value over time and then maybe I could sell it and reinvest it into companies that give me a higher dividend when I'm close to retirement but that has not been the case I'm actually down the most on this company over here with losing about $15 but again I'll just hold it dollar cost average and see how it go I might consider selling it but we will see only about 21 cents we got into it one of my newest holdings at 47 cents and then so on. I won't go through every single one because it's probably get a little bit boring. So I'll just scroll through. We got Apple at $1.62, which is a lot considering that its yield is only 0.59%. But Apple is the biggest holding in my portfolio at about 5%. So that's that. We'll also go through a little bit more. But you guys can see a lot of these companies don't really pay out that much. And that's just because I only have $5,350. But hopefully we'll be able to grow that in the future. So next off, let's look at the companies that paid me out the most, and this is going to get fun. So we got Avi over here, and Avi is definitely not the normal case. They have a pretty high dividend yield, but at the same time, they also have a high dividend growth rate. And I'll leave a link up to a video that I did on them. And to be honest, they are probably one of my favorite companies because they pay a high dividend and also have a high dividend growth rate. So $8.50. And I remember when I first got this company, when I first started investing, I was getting about $2 every single year. And dividend growth investing can actually get really, really boring. But it's so fun to watch that annual income go up over here and over here for each company. So definitely one of my favorite companies to kind of watch. I went from getting $2 every single year to getting about $2.50 per quarter. Then, of course, we got AT&T, Johnson Johnson, and so on. 
again guys this is probably the most fun thing about dividend growth investing is just watching your annual income go up over time as you keep investing more and more so yeah i'll just kind of scroll through so you guys can kind of get a look to see all my companies make sure you guys subscribe so you guys can check out more of my content or learn more about dividend growth investing let me know what companies you guys have or let me know how much annual income you guys are making so anyways that's pretty much it for the amount of annual income let's take a look at another cool thing and another cool feature about this platform i told you guys we're going to be dropping gems so let me show you guys this really cool feature and a really cool thing about my portfolio and you guys can do this for your portfolio as well so yeah right now my starting annual income in 2021 is a hundred dollars but if i don't add a single dollar just through dividend reinvesting and through my five-year dividend growth rate i'll be able to triple that in just nine years to 297 dollars every single year just through dividends and that's just insane to think about i'm not adding a single dollar beside the ones that i'm going to be reinvesting and just through that dividend growth rate my portfolio will yield me almost 300 dollars and it'll go from 5,000 up to 50 percent to 8,039 dollars without adding a single dollar for myself now hypothetically if i keep doing my 75 dollars every single year and i don't change the price appreciation which they only have at two percent which is very low i believe the average is eight to ten percent but let's just see just to take a look all right so you can see that i went from 100 dollars to 1700 dollars every single year in just nine years that's insane and my portfolio went from five thousand to almost fifty thousand dollars that's just insane and if we even take a larger outlook so let's say 25 years you guys will just see the insane amount of compounding and that's one important thing when it comes to building your dividends over time look at that compound it's you can see the exponential curve over here and that's what i'm really looking forward to twenty eight thousand dollars from a hundred dollars in annual income plus almost three hundred thousand dollars in my ending value that's just insane and look at that percentage increase fifty three hundred percent that is just insane so if you guys want to apply this to your own portfolio, you guys can do this with a bunch of other dividend calculators out there. But let's be honest, this is just insane. I am dropping gems. And if you guys like my content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Hopefully, we'll be able to see this and get a lot more people investing in the future and to love dividends. I think dividend growth investing is very slept on. And the cool thing is if we keep consistent and if we just keep on doing it anything is possible and you could definitely be able to retire early hypothetically let's just say that we are going to put a lot more we're going to put a hundred dollars every single week that's going to be 5200 we're going to change the price appreciation to eight percent and if we do that with the same dividend growth rate we will be getting almost a million dollars in portfolio and we will be getting ninety five thousand dollars every single year so if you stay consistent and hopefully just invest $100 every single year, you could become a millionaire in just 25 years. So hopefully this video really helped you guys out. Let me know what you guys think about my portfolio, my channel, anything like that. Leave a comment. Let me know if you guys have questions. Leave that all in the comments down below. And appreciate you guys for watching my video. And guys, remember, everybody eats.